here we have soon to be Dr. Jeff Miller. Thanks very much. Um, can you guys hear me? Is it okay? I might just uh, close the doors here. Thanks for that rousing um, welcome, mate. Um, I think also, actually, uh, bearing in mind the kind of um, events that uh, this week is bringing, we probably need to congratulate Ava's crew on, on raising the bar for uh, cannabis awareness, I think. Uh, it's probably the first time that we've had so many events, um, you know, of this nature. Normally it's rather grim sort of meeting in the octagon and then people go to a, a party or two. So um, I think, you know, well done. <laughs> Kia ora tato. Uh, good evening, everybody. Welcome. Um, yep, you've heard about me already. Um, thank you very much for coming along. It's great to see such a... A turnout. Uh, I see a, a few familiar faces. I won't uh, offer any more explanation than that. Um, so, first of all, I just uh, and it's any kind of study that you do, you know, there's people to thank, and in the kind of sociological study that uh, uh, that this is or uh, this represents, um, probably the number one uh, people to uh, or to acknowledge are the participants, and um, it, it couldn't have happened without them, obviously. Um, there are 80 cannabis uh, users who, um, whom I got to speak with, and there were actually 13 or 11 government officials up in Wellington, which is something I haven't really talked about. Um, and I talked to them about their opinions about policy in cannabis as well. And it was interesting to get the contrast. We probably won't get there tonight, but anyway, those kinds of uh, things can be talked about uh, you know, if, if that's uh, something that comes along. Okay, um, here's the big hair. <laughs> <coughs> so uh, there's just a bit of an outline of, of um, what I'd like to uh, have a look at tonight. Um, the background and the introduction of participants is kind of sort of a few figures and facts and stuff like that. And I think it's, it's, it's important, as, I, as I'll, I'll explain a little bit about that in a minute, and then we'll spend the sort of second half of, of the talk. Um, uh, I imagine that we're probably looking at heading out, getting out of here around uh, 8 o'clock. Is that right, Abe? Somewhere around 8? Um, yeah, but I mean, I'm yeah. sure people have questions. Great, right. yeah, well, we we'll, we'll go for about 40 minutes and, and, and then wrap up and, and if, you know, be keen to have conversation and uh, questions from people and, and, and obviously there'll be many of you here who know lots of stuff as well, more than many, many of the areas I'm sure and, and so perhaps it can be more of a conversation rather than just someone standing at the front sort of offering their wisdom. I'm sure there are plenty of uh, knowledgeable people here. Um, and so we'll wrap up then at, uh, at the end of perhaps of about 40 minutes. Right. Um, <clears throat> just a little bit about the uh, the study itself. I put this ad in the newspaper in, in uh, 2000 and, oh, actually it should be 2002, not 2004. There's a mistake already, oh goodness. Um, okay, so in 2000, I must have been listening to the, the press. Um, so in 2002, actually no, it was 2004 when the, when the ad went in. I started in 2002. Um, I had this idea that it might be good to look at, at substance use from a cultural, anthropological perspective. Um, there was a uh, select health select committee was in progress at that stage, looking at the appropriate legal status of cannabis, and, uh, and I thought, well, we'll start there. Um, I did uh, the usual reading around and stuff like that, and then uh, settled on a, on a method, which I'll describe soon, um, and uh, placed um, this advertisement in the community newspaper. I chose the community newspaper because it goes free, ostensibly, to every household in Dunedin. Um, whether or not it actually does, I don't know. I'm not getting it at the moment myself. I don't know if other people are missing out, but... Um, Excuse me. Anyway, um, so off goes the ad, and, and uh, the phones rang hot, and uh, I wanted 80 people because I one of the things that one of the issues that we have um, with information about cannabis and so on is it's dominated by medicine and science, and, and, and you get these surveys and you get um, uh, epidemiological studies which involve some pretty basic sort of statistics, the frequency of use, how how long you've been doing it, when did you start, all that sort of stuff, but I really wanted to, to and, I, and so you have to engage with that sort of information. You can't just forget about it, um, especially if you want to have a study or you want to talk about issues or raise issues that you think or hope you can generalise out into the broader community. I mean, otherwise you're accused of just talking to 15 of your mates or something like that, and, oh, we all said this. And, oh. You can't really generalise out from that. So you've got to have some level 
where you can engage with some of the other data that's already there. So I needed a big enough sample, which was 80 people, which doesn't sound many, but for a social, sociological study where you're talking to people and analysing the data, it's actually a very large sample. Um, I put the, um, <coughs> the ad in the paper and the phones rang hot and I had 160 people call me within about four weeks. Um, of those, 50% came through to agree to the process and I'd phone them up, introduce myself and they'd agree or not agree to go further. I'd send them out some information, they'd agree or not to go further. Um, we'd meet up and they'd agree or not to go further and then we'd go through the process, which um, uh, I'll tell you about in a minute. And, and so that happened in, in, in terms of an anthropological study, which is where I started, that, that, that's actually an incredibly rapid response and I think it says a lot about the level of use um, that there is of the substance. And, 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 uh, the, but the other interesting thing, of course, is we are talking about an illicit drug and yet people were prepared to, to step up you know, and talk to a total stranger you know, I say their complete confidentiality assured. Well, yeah, sure, it was as far as I was concerned, but I also had to say to people, well, look, at the end of the day, if the cops come in and say, right, we want those notes, um, it's up to me to say no, and I'd had said to people in the study that I would say no, you know, I'd have to sort of face the music without wanting to be too dramatic about it. But there are incidents overseas and other drug studies in relation to other drugs where um, people have uh, been coerced into remitting information, so you had to be aware of that. <clears throat> um, and we proceeded from there. The, the actual ad went in, um, initially I just had a sort of a caricatured marijuana leaf and, and I sent it off to the university, uh, their style group who organises um, these things and they said, oh, we don't know about that leaf, it's a little bit gratuitous. And I said, well, it's not gratuitous, it's the whole point of the study, you can't get rid of it. For goodness sake, you know, and I, oh, well, we'll speak to our manager. And next thing, this, ne this turns up in the, in, in, in the email and I'm looking at it and I'm going, well, that's an improvement, isn't it? <laughs> so, you know, so, uh, so I think, well, I'm not going to argue with that. <laughs> it's, well, the first week it went in next to an advertisement for a preschool, and I said to them, well, you know, <laughs> and they offered to put it in colour as well. I said, you know, <laughs> hold on. Um, and so I said, well, maybe we can sort of be a little more discreet in terms of, you know, there are these associations that we really don't want to get into. So, you know, so the next week it went into the adult entertainment section, and, uh, next to the next to the, uh, the massage and all that sort of stuff. So, you know, so they, 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 they covered the round, really, of, of uh, the ground of, of where one would imagine such an activity to be uh, focused. Um, OK, method. As I've said, the type of information we have is mostly medical information. It's dominated by medicine, and, 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 and then that feeds into the media, and we all know how the media picks up on these things and picks the most salacious details that it can, and it goes on from there. Um, that goes into policy and the, um, regrettably the people probably least appropriate to be involved in, in uh, drug policy are politicians. Um, and they take it from there and we, get, we end up with what we've got today and we can perhaps discuss that later on. Um, and the, the model that dominates is this, this thing here, the, um, the deficit model. And the deficit model is essentially users uh, seen in a, in, in a negativised context in a pathologised context, they're, they're people who are criminals or they have a mental illness or they're, they're, they're escaping from reality. <coughs> Excuse me, they've got all these kinds of issues uh, that lead them to be drawn to the use of drugs and, 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 and it's, it's seen as a kind of a passive uh, phenomenon. And so, and so they're, they're, they're using drugs and, and they're in the thrall of the drug. And, and, I, and I wanted to look at that because it seemed to me that probably maybe there was something else there, knowing a few people uh, who who used cannabis and worked in areas where, where one would be likely to meet such people, um, I thought, well, you know, that doesn't quite add up. So questioning the, the, the deficit model um, and the medical, the large amount of medical information that we have about cannabis use, which is how cannabis users are constructed or thought of or discussed, led me to thinking that an ethnographic approach, where, where you're going out and you're talking to people and you're having conversations and you're, you're getting their sense of meaning about it, it led me to believe that maybe that might be a better way to, to go. And, and, and part of the ethnographic approach is this business of reflexive theory uh, where, where you actually question not only um, the people that you're talking to, but you question how you're doing it. And you say, well, you know, what kinds of questions do I ask? And so we had focus groups and, and, and a couple of focus groups. And in those focus groups, uh, it, I, I got an understanding that perhaps some of the questions I was going to ask might, might be changed around. And, and so it allowed, it allowed me to interrogate not only what I was the people that I was speaking with, but also to interrogate the way by which I was doing that. And we move ultimately towards the notion of the narrative and the user's voice. And, and, 
And it's my argument that the user's voice is significantly absent from the kinds of um, conversations and the information that we have about cannabis use. And it seems to me that, that, that in term, if we're looking at, at, at having policy around cannabis use, if we're looking at engaging with issues in the context of harm or whether it's in, the, in other contexts, medicinal use, etc., we really got to uh, incorporate the voices of users because users are the people who are experiencing the phenomenon of use. It just seems really obvious in a sense, but it, it doesn't very often happen, not in New Zealand.